We thank you for joining in our live stream celebration today. Resources for this Mass were posted to the parish website and on our Facebook page, including a music sheet, the children's bulletin, and tips for watching the Mass in your home. We'll give you a few minutes to get things ready before we start.
Good morning. Welcome. Today we celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take home a bulletin or visit the parish website or Facebook page for information on upcoming events and important guidelines for attending Mass. Please remember that masks are required while you are in church and must be properly fitted over your nose and mouth and are worn throughout Mass except when receiving communion. Also, everyone needs to exit the pews for communion so that people don't have to walk over others. If you are not able to receive communion, please cross your arms over your chest for a blessing. Ushers will direct everyone at communion and when exiting Mass. Stewardship is responding to God's call to become more involved in the parish by sharing one's gifts of time, talent, and treasure. We ask that you prayerfully consider your response to our stewardship appeal. Our thanks to all who have already turned in your stewardship form. Prayer Fire Adoration Night is on Sunday tonight from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Join in adoration and praise and worship on the football field. All are invited to attend. Ladies of Peace, join us for a fun outdoor Zumba class next Saturday at 9.30 a.m. in the east parking lot outside of the chapel. All ages and fitness levels are welcome. If you are not receiving a weekly email on Mondays from the parish, please contact the office to be put on the distribution list. This email contains many important details about masses, events, and activities happening here at Prince of Peace. Our intention for this mass is Anthony Rock Sr. Our presider is Father Ken Clem. Please stand. Gather your people, O oh Lord. Gather your people, O oh Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O oh Lord. Draw us forth to the table of life. Brothers and sisters, each of us called to walk in your light. Gather your people, O oh Lord. Gather your people, O oh Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O oh Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Sorry, we jumped into the creed real quick. <laughs> we got Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, 
Lord of God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but was yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to set rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looks for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. of Israel, a vine from Egypt you transplanted, you drove away the nations and planted it, it put forth its foliage to the sea, it shoots so far as the river. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays its waste and the beast of the field feed upon it. Once again, O Lord of hosts, Look down from heaven and see. Take care of this fine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong, then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord 
is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the peace of God will be with you. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. To you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a large hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to these tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. that um, this weekend, that yesterday and this morning, uh, Father Greg is actually back visiting his family for his father's birthday. 
that I was yeah, telling him this, yeah, very brave of him to do so on this weekend where the gospel reading is very much about um, that, the, that yeah, as those left in charge are liable to beat, to kill, or to stone uh, him when he comes back. Um, he didn't think it was as funny as I did, but um, <laughs> the, uh, but no, that is very much why I love uh, his, his readings, readings like here today. Uh, because it is that not only do they have this very clear, historical, beautiful historical context, but they apply here in our lives today as well. That when Jesus spoke this parable, um, it was very clear that he was speaking, uh, very much uh, alluding to this reading from Isaiah that we just read from in the first reading, that pointing back to uh, the Isaiah's own uh, condemnation, uh, prophecy against the people of Israel, where they were turning uh, away from God and choosing instead the gods of the pagans, is falling into idolatry, uh, that producing of those sour, those wild grapes. But here Jesus, coming and turning and speaking there to the chief priests and the uh, elders, uh, that speaking here not of the idolatry of pagan gods, but instead that idolatry of the self. That here the chief priests and the elders had taken uh, in this beautiful time where no longer were the people of Israel turning to the gods of the Canaanites. No, instead they were coming to the temple in Jerusalem and worshiping God as they were called to do. However, it was that here the priests and the elders were taking this beautiful faith, this beautiful religion that belonged to God and saying, it is mine. I will choose how this goes. We know best and we shall choose what shall happen. This taking and taking possession of that which belonged to God and becoming even jealous and possessive of it. And then here our Lord so very beautifully speaks to not only um, this idolatry of the self, but then speaking to that beautiful fact that our Lord has sent prophets throughout the ages, has sent these servants here to return this vineyard here to himself, that they're speaking uh, almost uh, very, very, very directly of the killing of Isaiah, the stoning of Jeremiah, that speaking so very, uh, very um, pointedly there at the priests and the elders, but then he prophesies, he foreshadows, speaks of his own death to come. As we look at that beautiful like historical context that surrounds the gospel here today, that movement from the idolatry of the pagan gods into that idolatry of self, that killing of Isaiah, the stoning of Jeremiah, the foretelling of Christ's own death, these beautiful historical factors create that, um, indeed, that, create that beautiful context for these words that Christ spoke those 2,000 years ago. But that is by no means, my brothers and sisters, no means the only way that we read, the only way that we encounter the word of our Lord here in Scripture today. Then indeed, truly, the words of Christ were spoken in history, in that moment in history, and um, can learn from that beautiful historical context. But the word of God is not some dead note. It is not simply a blip in history, but it is alive. It is living. Ever ancient, ever new, present here, living here among us today. It is very much why, very much when people are stuck in, in prayer, I often point them to Scripture for this very reason. Because it is that as we encounter, that as we encounter Scripture, we encounter that ancient, that beautiful history, the historical context there, but also that beautiful speaking, that new speaking of our Lord through that Scripture here in our lives today. It's just that as our Lord spoke that parable to each of the priests and the elders there in the temple, he speaks it now anew through time, through space, here to this time, here with us, here this Sunday morning, here in Olathe. Not only with that beautiful warning against not stoning or beating Father Greg when he gets back, which we definitely should not do, um, because we love him and we don't, uh, we don't want to hurt him, but also, I mean, as we heard in the parable, it doesn't turn out so great for those tenants when they do. Um, but no, truly... Like the priests and the scribes that Jesus spoke to, who stood there in that vineyard of the Lord, there in the temple of Jerusalem, we stand here, each of us in our vineyard of the Lord, this temple of our God that is our very selves, that is here in each of us. 
And just as our Lord planted that vineyard, dug that winepress, and built that tower of the old temple, through again and again sending his prophets again and again, saving and blessing his people, here too in us he has planted this vineyard. He has dug that wine press of our faith. He has built that tower of our blessings. And here in our lives, whether our vineyard is overflowing with a bountiful harvest or whether it is in drought, whether our blessings are multiplying not only in the physical or even in the spiritual life or whether we struggle to find where those blessings are, that it is that like the elders and the priests there in the gospel, that so very often this vineyard of God, standing here, we say, it is mine. I own, I possess, this belongs to me. These blessings are mine. These struggles are mine. I will decide, I will go. I know. And so very beautiful it is that just as our Lord sent those prophets there to the people of Israel, there all throughout history, he sends here to us as well those servants. So very often appearing as those who always seem to be interrupting, annoying, frustrating, difficult to love, or even just exasperating. Our Lord sending us here, these beautiful servants, these beautiful messengers, to call us once again back to love, calling us once again back to this life here with him. And so, my brothers and sisters, whether it is that uh, we are responding so very beautifully here to this, the call of our Lord through his frustrating or annoying servants, or whether it is that we like the tenants in the gospel here today, would rather say, no, it is mine, and go away. That we come here today, my brothers and sisters, here to the altar of our Lord, here before him in worship and praise, here at the Mass, to come before the Lord, to come before the true owner of that vineyard, and to not simply come before him and to stand and to stare, but to come and to invite him here to remain, to reside, to be with us here in that vineyard of our soul. To not simply uh, toil here alone and to wait to, walk, to wait to meet him from afar, but to invite him to come to work this vineyard, to live here in this vineyard, here with us, to take possession here with us. So then indeed, that here as we toil, here as we go forth to respond to that beautiful call of our Lord to go forth and produce that fruit here of the vineyard, that even in that production of our Lord's fruit, to not even there walk alone, but even here to turn to our Lord and ask for him here, that it might be not only his vineyard, but his fruit that he produces here with us, here today. Everyone, please stay seated for a moment. I promise we will get to the creed. I've already tried once today, and we will definitely get there at a point. Um, but first, uh, that uh, I would invite uh, Rod and uh, Lacey uh, McMullen to please stand. Um, that I won't ask you forward because of yeah everything going on. But uh, if uh, Rod and uh, Lacey would please stand. That here today we celebrate uh, their 50th wedding anniversary. Um, so very beautiful that as yeah, if, if you all may have um, learned from uh, your time with me that I love um, celebrating uh, these beautiful, uh, yeah, beautiful anniversaries, these beautiful testaments um, to this vocation of marriage, this vocation of holy vocation of marriage here in our midst here today. And so Rod and Lacey, on the anniversary of that celebration at which you joined your lives in unbreakable bond through the sacrament of matrimony, 
You now intend to renew before the Lord the promises you made to one another. Turn to the Lord in prayer that these vows may be strengthened by divine grace. May the Lord keep you safe all the days of your life. May he be your comfort in adversity and your support in prosperity. May he fill your home with his blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, answer with the Father, Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came from heaven. But the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we come before you with our petitions. Listen to them with mercy and your loving kindness. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Nauman, and all religious, may they show us the way to the Father by being faithful followers of Jesus in all they do and say. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our political leaders, may they work faithfully for the good of all people in our nation, fighting racism and injustice, poverty and hunger, unemployment and inequality, wherever it is found. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, may we tirelessly work in the vineyard of our society for the benefit of Christ and bringing others to him through our deeds, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, may they find solace in the comfort of God's presence and recognize him in the many blessings of everyday life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Joseph McMahon, may they find comfort in the heavenly kingdom, praising God forever on high. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we look to you in time of need. Hear these petitions and answer them according to your holy will. Give us the grace to respond to your will and faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, as we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, to be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our proud brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you or passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, Informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one. Many the gifts, many the works, one in the Lord of all, one bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one. for the fields scattered and grown gathered to one for all one bread one body one Lord of all one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one. Trust in me, your faith will give you strength. Leave all your fears behind you, let your heart be free, for I will be your guide. Oh, come and follow me. Come follow me these footsteps, I'll lead you gently home. 
No shelter, food, or money will you need upon this road. Come follow me and live. Do not be afraid. Believe and trust in me. Your faith will give you strength. Leave all your fears behind you. Let your heart be free, for I will guide your guide. Oh, come and follow me. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So a couple of announcements uh, before we go. Uh, oh yeah, firstly, of course, <laughs> congratulations to, to Rod and to Lacey here on this, yeah, their 50th wedding anniversary, um, as well as that uh, for those who are joining us on our live stream, uh, that we'll be having the right for the distribution of Holy Communion outside of Mass uh, in the north parking lot. Uh, they're behind the school at 1015. Uh, to please uh, come join us uh, and to receive uh, the Eucharist. And finally, that our, we're still in the midst of our uh, stewardship uh, driver stewardship uh, call. So uh, for, um, for those who may remember, Father Greg is very adamant about wanting to get 100% participation, which is a very lofty goal, but it's one that we could definitely um, get to if we all did participate and simply just um, filling out our uh, stewardship uh, forms and saying, yeah, where it would be that we'd be interested in. Um, but, that, but with that, um, I think it would be a, a very wonderful way to, to welcome Father Greg back home after his journey instead of with beatings and with stonings, but with uh, an influx of stewardship, uh, uh, um, stewardship cards. So to please, um, for the, thank you for those who have already turned in your stewardship forms and for those who are still doing so, to please um, to do so soon. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all who are gathered here in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Now with the strength of your word, send us to be your disciples and to bring through to the joy of your kingdom. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Fed with the bread of new life, filled with the 
wine of compassion, send us out to serve all the world in your name.